Hi, and thank you very much for staying here with us on the Joy Prime channel on Multi TV. My name is Nathaniel Atto, as always, and I bring you another edition of Autograph, where we review the lifestyle of your favorite people. Today, we're talking to another person on the silver screens, a multiple award-winning actress who goes down in history as one of the very few who's been able to combine roles in Kumawood, which is the local language uh, productions and, uh, and English productions as well. She has various passions. She's into social work and she also does music. And um, I saw her take a very nice penalty as well some time ago. She loves to travel as well and she is just one fabulous person you'd always want to share company with. My guest in the studio will be joining me very, very shortly. So that's the reason why you also have to stay right here on the Joy Prime channel on Malta TV. I'd like to say thank you to the, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, management of Alisa Hotel, who have always uh, given us this uh, fine location to bring you this program from. I'd also like to say thank you to Royal Dennis. Yes, um, gorgeous by Royal Dennis for making me look always, uh, you know, Speaking in Spanish. I've been getting some compliments uh, from my guests. So you stay right there. We'll do a round of commercials. And after that, we go straight to the discussion with my guest. All right. Thank you very much for staying with us. And my guest in the studio is uh, Nanama McBrown. I don't know the last time you heard of her. I don't know which of her last movies you watched. And I don't know where you saw her and what she was doing. But she's here with me to tell me all about that and all of the stuff she does away from camera action. Cut. <laughs> Nanama. Nice. Mm. How are you? Sister Alma. Nice to say. How are you? If you don't take care, I'll interview you today. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be real good. It's been a while. Yes. I've been sure. around. You look good. Try and all. The uh, competition now is so serious. <laughs> competition with who? <sighs> Health. <laughs> look, I, I think you look amazing. I mean, thank you. You look fabulous. I mean, I, I'm just imagining I was a cameraman or a photographer. I'd have taken some hey. very, you know, I'll pose for you, Papa. Vision like or a go like <laughs> pictures, to, you know. Now, and and, and that, that, that just brings me to my question. Um, you changed looks about two years ago, and. I was wondering, I saw you somewhere, I saw you at a show and I, I was like, wow, hey, I haven't looked for Nanama in a long time, there she is because looking. Because you don't look for me, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I mean, how did you manage to do that? I mean, it must have been very tough. Yes, it was, but somehow it was easy for me. Wow. Because I was just ready for that change. Okay. I was ready to, to be sexy. I'm not saying when you have weight you're not sexy, but the point is, it's, it's, it's different when you can carry yourself. Sure. I wasn't that big, but yet I wasn't able to carry myself. I, I wasn't see. able to get the sexy dresses. I wasn't able, I wasn't comfortable in so many things. Okay. My health, when I do, you know this is my job. Kuma yeah. Wood is about giddy giddy, it's about yeah. aggressiveness and all. So, yeah. It's more than going to the gym. Kuma Wood, it's not easy. Oh. So any little role, I get tired. Wow. I start and I say, no, 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 no. Me, I have the 16 look, the 18 look. Why can't I go back and lose some weight and feel sexy all over again? So basically, it was about my health and it was about my job. Mm. Tell me about the reactions. I'm, I'm very interested in that. Like what people were saying to you when they saw you in town and all of that. You know what I did? Okay, I tell just me. kept it secret for a while when I started dieting. Mm. Because um, I wanted to hear the results from people. And when you get to see every, every, someone every day, you know, you don't see the change. So the first person that saw me after about six months was like, Hey, is that you? <laughs> And I posed again and said, yeah, this is me, Mac Brown. We have only one Mac Brown, and that's me. So, but my mother was like, you look sick. Wow. Ghanaians, my friends are telling me, Aden, I'm a Oyariana. Is she sick? Is anything wrong? My friend comes, so somebody says, you have HIV. I say, I have SSD. <laughs> <laughs> Not HIV. Let them say whatever, but for a minute I had to think about what my mom said. Okay. Because she keeps on telling me, put on some weight. She was bugging you. You know, Ashanti people, if you're slim, that means you're poor. 
<laughs> if you put on weight, your tummy, everything, this yeah, yeah. weight woman man is coming. I see. You know, that's the mentality of my mom, definitely. So okay. I had to put small weight for her. But I told her I'm not going up again mm. because I feel very sexy in this. Tell me, Nanama, why don't we like talking details? Hey, uh, you know what? We're in Africa. You have to be careful about what you say on TV. Okay. The viewer may not understand where I'm coming from. Okay. And this is a country we are bound by, or bound by um, superstition, tradition, uh, culture, okay. belief. I mean, religion, and so you have to be very careful. But the reality is, if you ask me anything about my work, anything that I feel no, like but, people but need no, no, to know, your life is already out there. I mean, yeah, when but you, you cough, but when I bath in my house, you don't need me. <laughs> you don't bath me. Don't be so sure about that. <laughs> Don't be so sure. I'm so sure about that. That one there. It was when I had the accident that yeah. we'll somebody was that. bathing me. Somebody was bathing me. Who was that? No, let me say bathing me. Don't say bathing me. Let okay. me say. I sometimes I want to talk oh, for bath. my as in, you know. Yeah. Yeah, okay. The sponge, one where um, the sponge, okay. That's bath. Ma, that's bath. Bath. Yeah. Bath. Okay. Yeah. So I hang my hand. Someone, one person will hold it. Okay. And then the one person will have the advantage of checking the body out oh. by bathing, you know. Um, male? Male, did I? Yeah, one male, Mac Maxwell. Yeah, he did bath me. Who's Maxwell? Oh, come on. Maxwell is my fiance, my oh, okay. boyfriend. Okay, so the at man least in he. My life. Yeah, so I mean, if he's the man in your life, it's He's not seen so, it already. Yeah. But <laughs> it was already fun. Seen it. Yeah. Oh, it was fun, but not fun. So he'd lift your legs. So he'd lift your legs. But that one, I use the left one to clean it. Oh, okay. That one, which one? I want me to go there. Don't push. Come <laughs> <laughs> if you just joined us, we're here in the very good company of uh, multiple award-winning actress Nanama McBrown, and uh, she's also, uh, you know, into a lot of social work. She has a fabulous life away from all of the hard work. And uh, we're just prying into it a little bit here on Autograph, as we always do. Well, now, um, everybody's always interested in the story, you know, where it began and all of that. We always like to do it in reverse and do it, yeah. you know, uh, left, right, center. Okay. First of all, the ability to just combine the roles in the local language movies and four English movies. Some, okay, some sit back and think it's difficult. Some also think, well, it's not much of a big deal. What do you think? Um, not, you know, everybody's different. Mm. It is natural. Okay. Me, Nanami Mike Brown, I have this, it is me, I'm local, I can't change. Sometimes I pretend to be some mama, blah, 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 which I'm not. <laughs> you know, it is because I'm acting, yeah. but naturally I am a down to earth, I want to call myself, I'm proud Ghanaian and mm. I always want to remain Ghanaian. Yeah. So um, with a combination English and tree there, I drink it. Okay. I eat it, I sleep it, mm. you know where, where I am yeah. from, from Kumasi, so yeah. basically. But with the English, I learned it. I learned it from school, from friends, and everywhere, I keep learning. Now, combining to acting is me, my life. I wanted to act, I wanted to be a star in Kasa from 18, I there really, about. really wanted I to see. be a star. At age 18? Yeah. What was the, what? What, what, what was the push? What was it that was just pushing I, you? I to want to be um, okay from childhood. Yeah, okay. I've been I've been this person that I front everything. Okay. In my family, when we are looking for somebody to fix this, is I, I, I'm called mother in the house. I see. It's mother. When we are in school and any activity is Nanama. In school, I was called Felicity. Okay. Why? That was my name in school. I see. But growing up, I didn't like the English name. Okay, so your Christian name is Felicity. Yes. I see. And you I decided see. to drop it. Yeah, it was too long for my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and they go like Felicity, Felicity. Felicity. We all call her mommy. I say, mommy. And, and, yet, <laughs> crab, you know, friend, I'm a nana. and then I was named after her, so they yeah. had to add an anama okay. to it. All right. Mm -hmm. But, but you, uh, you, so, grew up, you grew up in the Ashanti region, and I... I that's a very big area of interest. Um, you talked about your childhood. What was the family size like? What was your home like growing up? That my family, they were big. 
Be yeah, you know, be Ashanti people, they will tell you, oh, this is my sister. Meanwhile, it's the uncle's, your uncle's yeah. daughter or yeah. something. So that's how we count it. My mom's got four girls. My auntie who raises up got two boys. Okay. So when you meet me, I'll tell you we are six. I see. We grew up together in an uncompleted building. I see. Owned by my grandmother. Went to plenty schools because we are moved. Why? I was I was I went to school in Latibio Koshi. Okay. After two terms, I'll be we moved back to Kumasi, and we have to go back to Kumasi. Why? Why were you? Why? Why the plenty movement? That is the family. I was okay. young, and it was the situation. Then my mom did was you, a did trader. You, did you did you have fun or you you were feeling you know were feeling um, uncomfortable about the situation? Oh me, I can adjust to every situation. I can live anywhere in the world. So when we come here, the next, the first two weeks is when I feel like I'm a new person. After the two weeks, I'm part of you, you know. So growing up is Kumasi, Accra. Even when I tell people I live in Accra, they still don't believe it. I'm being tied with Kumasi, 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 Kumasi. Like Sako, there, you know, Kumasi, yeah. Kumasi, Kumasi, Kumasi. <laughs> we'll come to the music and all of that in a bit. Um, <laughs> so your siblings, um, what role did they play in? Pushing you to always, you, you said that you were the one who was always fronting stuff, yeah. standing in the middle of stuff and everything. But what role did they play in just shaping you to become this fine actress? Okay. You know, I told you I want, really wanted to be a star. Yeah. I started being a footballer. I, I played see. for Kotoko Ladies. I see. I was coached what, what, by. What position? What position? Oh, I did you played play? 7 and 11. I ran by. 7 and 11. Okay, hold on. Now, um, your, mom never, me. Your, your mom never complained. Your mom never complained My about mom it. mom was the problem. Okay. She always go like, hey, you become like a man. Nobody will like you. Then so you were a tomboy you. when you were growing up? I am still a tomboy. Bo- you oh. think so? I don't think so. Oh, I, I, have, I have to comport myself here. <laughs> so I am still a tomboy. Okay. I, not a tomboy in that, but sure. I have the... Mm. So that the explains, and you know, the other time we met on an AstroTurf and you took... The ball, you took it with a lot of You didn't precision. pay me. You didn't give me my money. <laughs> Remember, we, we had a bet. We had a bet. <laughs> <laughs> and I scored. I'm going to calculate with it. You had to. Yeah. I was a footballer. I see. I played for Kotoko Ladies. Number seven and number 11. Wow. And then I okay. moved. When, when did you start it, actually? I mean, when it must have started from somewhere. Oh, I started when I was just after Genesis. Okay. I, st- I was so passionate about being a star and I didn't want to okay. be a star negative. And, and, and in our Ghanaian society, I mean, you were growing up, you were exposed to stuff. So, I mean, yeah, we have women's football, but it was not, it's not as big as men's My football. So why did, you want to, why did you want to toe women's football? Of all the other things you could you have know, done. You know, when you are young... Because, because newscasters on television are popular, musicians are popular. Why did you want to play football to become popular? You know, when you're young, you have a lot of aspirations. Okay. And when we were in school, we were choosing subjects. I said, oh, I will be a newscaster. Mm. I realized plenty of people in my class want to be a newscaster. I said, ah, there are only two and you TV wanted to be stations. Unique. And there are only two TV stations Ghana in television. Ghana. You won't want to be a newscaster. <laughs> so what, where, where will I fit? I can be the number one, but I feel like we're going to struggle to be there. So let me turn to do another thing. That's why I went it. Actually, I was the table tennis champion for my school. Wow. Oh, I play table tennis like wow. crazy. Wow. Yeah. So that's why I went into football. After moving from Kotoko Ladies to Tema Bluna Ladies, it was then Gapoha Ladies. Wow. My mom came to Tema and said, Madam, you, we can't leave you to live in Tema with an auntie. Come back to Kumas. And that's how my football... Um, ambitions went down the drain. Okay, so so you, you, you were aspiring to play for like the Black Queens and all? Because my adopted father, who is late now, mm. um, was seeking sponsorship for me in America. I see. In uh, outside Ghana, I see. Europe, so many countries. So I it see. was something that I knew I had a future in it. But it was after my mom always struggling me, I said, no, football go. I'm done. Let me look at it. I went into business with my mother. It didn't work again. Then I said, oh. one day I had a chance to listen to Kwame Uswan's on radio in Kumasi. May God bless his soul. And 
that's how I started acting. Kwame awesome. came to my house after three days, calling him pressure. I gave him pressure, and I was so lucky. I've never struggled in life plenty. No, no, no. I was about to ask about that. You, you, you. So, in terms of smoothness, you never struggled in life. You never... As in, whatever I want, and I set my mind yeah. on it. On doing it. Yeah. I don't know how it will come by, but I'll just have it. Mm. But tell me about family, economic standing, and all of that. Were you? No, were you... we're not comfortable, crap. You are not. We're living in one room. How many? All six of you are living in one uh, room. We are lucky. Both. Some people are more than six in the room. Wow. And it was my grandmother's house. I see. It's just that it was just un uncompleted. The only one room roof, you know. One room pet. The rest are open space. So there was for, it was always warm in the room in the evenings. You know, listen, life is about you. The decision you make for yourself for tomorrow. You don't have to look at where you are and then you curse yourself. I call it curse. I don't have to go immediately near you. Look at the situation. You belong, you belong where? <laughs> if, if you have this positive attitude. Uh, attitude, I believe so much in that. And that is what has carried me with God. I'm here. Yeah. You know, from there, I decided to do other things. With my family, hmm, don't let me go there. We had nothing. We were sleeping on wood. Wow. Put on brakes and the mattress will be an artificial bed. Bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but my grand we were living in a family house before we okay. moved there. Because my grandmother felt like growing up in a family house, it was too crowded. Family house. Six people in each room, one toilet, one bathroom. Round house. You have your compound, the kitchen. One everybody's kitchen. in everybody's that business. Is, that is Kumasi <laughs> family house for yeah. you before. Yeah. So Which suburb in Kumasi did you grow up? Kwada State. I see. Where was Kwada State? Kwada State. So. Mm. Wow, wow. I see. <laughs> Sakodia likes me so much. I say that because he's mentioned Kumasi, 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 Kumasi. And now he say, girl, be Jim, do you Kwada So when you say me, Mashanda, so you mm. know. I see. So Sakodia is promoting my area. and I love it when I hear that song. Wow, wow. Mm. I see. Growing up, it wasn't easy, but come on, we're, we're, we're too. And you, and you played football. Wow. Do you, do you have any of your, your football boots around? Do you still keep Oh, no. Any? I have some pictures. Oh, wow. Some old pictures, group pictures. The, if you see wow. my face, I was what, like... What, 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 what happened to your, your playing mates? Do you follow up? You? Some people call me. Okay. I have some that are coaches for the team. Wow. I was playing in Mary. She's I called see. Mary. One is coaching that team now. I see. With Ola. And... Um, I have friends who used to be Elizabeth. She used to be in Black Queens. Wow. She's in America now. I have Ophelia. She's in Tema. I have friends that call me and say, Hey, Nana, are you? Very, very. Wow. You know, we used to, I like it when I hear from them. Mm. I, it makes me smile. It makes me know how far God has brought me. Mm. I'm not saying they're not lucky because someone's got money yeah. than me, though. You know, people like to talk about, you know, people in public generally talk. And I'm sure in Kumasi there's there are all sorts of, you know, uh, perceptions about, you know. So, you said your mom didn't really agree with you playing football. Yeah. Now, there's this notion as well about ladies who play football and, you know, same-sex relationships and all of that. Is that, uh, does it happen in, in female what? football teams? Yes. It does. I haven't seen anyone doing that, but I've seen attitude. I've seen... People have shown... Yeah. I see. When I started... You dare not. <laughs> that woman, that coach, Abi Bata. Yeah. No, you cry, you are scared though. <laughs> you dare not. I see. But now it's common. Mm. Now I don't want to judge people. Mm. But now the attitude is out there. Yeah. Too much than my time. Yeah. And now you see people fighting, arguing. In, in football in camps, football ladies camps, teams. Ladies teams. Yeah. No, I have I had a girl who I tried to help her. Mm. She had she came back telling me, Nana, I have to stop. Because me mean person I didn't know more. And I said, what do you mean? Say when you um, they want to I say, okay, then it's your choice. Because it's say Nana it's too much now. If you don't do you don't have 
put a lesbian a, partner. No, you can't. Play. You can't be happy there. And so okay. The, the so, so what happens in the camp? What what happens? They. they I don't have a proof. I'm okay. only saying what I'm saying. Based on direct, direct, direct. Yeah. The girl told me, yeah. and I've seen a couple of them. Yeah. The action, attitude, and some mm. arguing. Then you know where they're coming from. Wow. You know. Wow. It's bad, but hey, you can't wow. control it. <laughs> well, up close, personal, and uh, very revealing. And this is a Nanama McBrown story right here on Autograph. I'm really having a good time. I'm sure you are too. And uh, we'll do some more. We'll be talking some more about uh, the break into acting and uh, how she's been able to manage all of the fame and the fortune as well. And uh, life in general, how she likes to just wind it and take it easy and just calm herself down and you know uh, all of those other things that's why we'll talk some more money and uh, even though she doesn't want to reveal too much detail uh. so you stay right here this is autograph Um, I'm really having fun here. Um, now Nanama wants to be asking me the questions, but she's not permitted to. She can only do that off the set. Mm -hmm. We're still here on Autograph. Um, Nanama McBrown is my guest. Nanama, we, we spoke a bit about your days growing up in school and all of that. I'm very interested in school. You, you moved locations severally with school. Yeah. So how much interest did you have in what you were doing in the classroom as well? You know, growing up wasn't easy for me. I'm just, I, I, I want to be real so that my story can motivate people, people sure. to, to know that no matter what the situation is, things can turn around, be, be depending on how determined you are in life. Growing up wasn't easy. I was raised by a single mother and my grandmother. My grandmother left us in 1992. She did, you, died. did you meet your father? Oh, I, my father is alive. He's alive, okay. Yeah. My father is in the eastern region. I come from a I see. In the eastern region. My father is So they, they separated? Region. They never Way, I think, just after I was born. I see. I was a baby when they separated. My father loved me to like, I never saw him again. Wow. Because my mom always say, your dad was so much in love. I mean, you were fair, you know? Yeah. And when you have babies that are fair, you want to help them. But <laughs> I've been called a Bruni's heart too. I grew up and I realized they were lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 so what happened? Your your dad remarried. My or dad he... remarried, moved because my dad loved farming. Okay. So he moved from Kumasi back mm. to our hometown. Okay. To farm. I see. He's into Abefu. When I say Abefu, I understand. Abe is, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Abefu is palm plantation. I tell you, you're not going to get me. Okay, so that means that means that it has cut my money, the money I owe you for the bet. <laughs> you, okay, okay, you got it right. Yes, you got it right. My, farm, my dad is into farming, Abefu. I see. Yeah, yeah. I see. Good. Palm, is it, now he's making oil. Wow. Yeah, is it palm oil? Palm yeah, oil. Palm oil, yeah. Mm. That's he very lucrative some, as well. Yeah, it's good. Mm. He doesn't like to be in Accra. I, see. I told him to come for a change. He said, no, 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 Accra, I will be a, yeah. will be a new madam for so I won't yeah. come. I'm comfortable. You just send me the money. <laughs> you send, <laughs> send me money, anything I'll call yeah. so, okay. We were talking about school. I'm very interested in that. How you managed to get interested in classwork, especially when you had to be moving from school to school. Hmm. Hmm. Can, can you even count the number of schools you attended? Schools, primary? yeah. I think I've attended more than 10, 15 schools. You remember where they're all yeah. located? <laughs> I went to Auntie Mary Pepe, <laughs> Auntie Mary Kindergarten. Okay. From Auntie Mary, we're going to Mr. Atta Day Nursery. You yeah. know, they call it Day Nursery. Day Nursery, okay. Oh, you didn't believe in a century. <laughs> you don't understand it. <laughs> From day nursery, I went to Peters International okay. for a year or so. Okay. I went to Cambridge. Okay. My grandmother always wanted us to be in good school. Okay. Yet, 
any little thing that a teacher will beat you know it will come out you from the school <laughs> <laughs> mostly i see when growing up that is the thing how 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 was the school fee situation managed because you're saying that it wasn't easy yeah from cambridge mm. she couldn't afford it again yeah, the fees again so there was this new school coming in quite so it, it was called Minnesota, but now i okay. think it's quite the king so the the headmaster was like going around campaigning for kids and my grandma said oh i bring my grandchildren <laughs> So we're part of the first okay the first batch batch too okay so you got free tuition yeah beginning now but that's cool i went for like three four years my teacher mr ajiman gave me some lashes i have some mark here my grandmother said my daughter my grandchild who cannot come to attend this school again hey, bro, ni, pa. Mi, oh that's the way i didn't want to go there <laughs> so she had to we were young and you know when you're young and going to a new school, you, you're happy that you don't know what to find, you're going to find there, but you're happy. So from there, now because we were many, and only my, my auntie and my mom was like, we had to move from Minnesota to Saito. I went to Saito. The government school? Yeah. Okay. The one that you go, some people will go, some back go, go in, in the, the morning, morning and some go, some in, the go in the afternoon. I see. So so you did both. You did yes. morning and afternoon. Yes. I see. Sometimes it's my turn to be in class. Uh, in how, the how far away was school from home? Oh, the Saito was close. Was very close. Uh, so you didn't have to walk a lot? No, no, no. no. The Saito was like 400 meters, 500 meters away from wow. home. Wow. I see. So it was good for my grandmother. And then again, from the Saito, no, I try out to Jesus. From there, I moved to Jesus. And the Jesus was uh, closer to the house. Wow. And we had one teacher renting my grandmother's one of the rooms. Wow. Yeah, that was after many years living in uncompleted. Gradually, my grandmother would sell her clothes and say, okay, I am with you, so let me roof the other one. The money wasn't there, but she'll try. You don't know how they'll do it. You know, mothers and grandmothers, they have this spirit that they always want their child to come, even though they don't have. No, so we are lucky to have um, Mr. Sabri living, renting a room in our place. So we are owing fees, but yet, because of the teacher, we are allowed to still go to school. Tell my grandmother felt sick. I had to be in the house for about six months. Without going. It's a whole lot of issues. Wow. My auntie moved us from, after my grandmother died, she moved us from... Kumasi to Latibi Okoshi, where I went to Latibi Okoshi, Jesus. Mm. Mm-hmm. Moving, moving from Kumasi to Accra, I mean, the whole change in environment, you know, things being done slightly differently and all of that. Mm-hmm. No effect on you? you? No, because um, gr- growing up with my grandmother, she made us understand that she doesn't have it. Okay. Where was your mom in all of this? My mom traveled when we were young. Okay. Outside the country? Outside the country when we were young. So my sisters, myself... And, and how did you raised. communicate with her? Did oh, you ever she hear was her calling. Her? We go to the communication center all the time. Yeah, come center. To wait for her call <laughs> and all the time supporting us. And my auntie was um, like my grandmother and my auntie, Mama Betty, and which I, she's my mother. I'm only saying auntie because I've become a star and people know that She's my auntie, even though I hate calling her auntie. She'll be angry crying for me calling her auntie, but I just, because of, for the sake of the people, yeah. uh, they have to know the reality as in. Yeah. yeah, so Mama Betty, my auntie, that's my mother's older sister. Mm. She and my grandmother raises her. Wow. So my mom was calling, she didn't have her papers then, so once in a while she would send money, she would call. We, Oh my for a woman then go to the woods and then <laughs> no, that kind of thing. I'm just grateful that hey Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and movement to Latibe Okoshi from Kumasi. From Kumasi. I mean, Latibe Okoshi, let me show you where I was living. There's a place called Club Six Hundred. Okay. Opposite um, Empire Office. There's a road there. Empire you, Entertainment. Into, yeah, yeah. You go down the Club Six Hundred, it has about three thousand people living in the house. 
Wow. You have no idea. I don't know the situation now, but mm. when I was living there, some six hundreds went. Sometimes, okay, I shouldn't go there. <laughs> I was just living right up Seed Club six hundred, okay. and uh, there's this cinema called Pomo. Yeah, I was living next to Pomo. Wow. So every morning like that, I'll come, I'll run into the cinema, watch some shule and those things on Saturdays mainly. Yeah, but Monday to Friday, I'll go to my school. Wow. Mm. Wow. Did you actually? Did you, actually, yeah. I've lived in Latibi Okoshi. I've lived in Niboy Town. Okay. And I've lived on the Sprinters Road. Before. Okay. Now, um, the cinema was close to your house. I mean, you were a child. Uh, you had the means to swerve or mm. stay away from school. Did you find yourself ever running away to, you know? Oh no, from school, yeah, no, I didn't. Because from if you have to, if you, it's if it's a school day. They check kids going to the cinema. I see. But we can't like that. It's free. I finish quick. And then you and go then and then walk. And then mommy, we got out there, but <laughs> So when cinema, my mom got to know it later. And when we are looking for you, we won't find you. I want the cinema closed now. Was she, was she strict? Your mom, your aunties, your grandmother, were they strict? My auntie. Not. Ah, at age 20, she was still beating me. Not like wow. beat that she hurts me, but... When I don't do something right, you know that is the African mother. They feel like when they punch you is when <laughs> you're, you're going to be disciplined or you listen to them. But they don't know that it's part of going all up. the way up to a twenty. Wow. Hey. <laughs> she wait after you sleep. I see. She will let you sleep and then come around three thirty four. Talk about that reminds me of secondary school. Um, you did secondary school yes, in Accra, in Kumasi. Or Kumasi? Mm. In Kumasi. Mm. How was secondary school like? Okay, me, I went to a day school. Mm. I went to a girls' school. Mm. Name again? Prince of Peace Girls. Prince of Peace secondary. Girls, okay. That's cool. It was called Pop G's. Okay. Yeah, it was a Roman school. All right. And uh, my mom was like, So you come home every day. So now you should see the kind of woman uh, I grew up with, my auntie. She knows that you close at three, you should be home by four. By four, choco choco, you should be home. And at four, you won't go anywhere. She was so strict. You not even my brothers could go out. All right, and you never got the opportunity to do any extracurricular activity with your friends, like hang out with them. Oh no, you know? it was only when it's in Taco. Okay. Yeah, that time, you know, ma. Hey, in Taco, before Christ, she didn't know what is in Taco, so she won't let you go. I see. So I had to tell them because of my table tennis in school, I have to be there and then because of that. <laughs> Meanwhile, sometimes I don't even go <laughs> play table tennis. So I'm going to have fun. I see. Yeah, I will go because of Jama. I see. Because she Jamusa, Jama. Wow. You know, it's fun. Growing up, um, POP was girls' school. And you, it's more like living with your sisters. Okay. Yeah, go to school in the morning after school. We walk. When I'm going to school, I take Trotro to school. When we close, we have about four girls. We walk. I see. From my secondary school to my house is a little far. I see. But we, walk, we go through Pemper College. Oh, through back okay. there. And, but come on, it was part, it was part of life. I mm. see, I see. So now you were growing up. You were becoming an adult. Yeah. Then you started thinking about what you wanted to become yeah. one day. Okay. So at which point did you say Kwame Uswansa came to your oh, house? Oh, that was way after secondary school. Secondary school, everybody wanted... Did you, did you stop school after secondary school? I stopped secondary school. I see. Because of school fees. Oh, you, you broke off from I school. Broke you broke off. You had to drop out because drop of school. Out because of fee. Wow. Drop out, cry. I wasn't going, and because of fee. So so wait, uh, you couldn't pay fees. You came home, and then what? What were you doing? And after a year or so, I wanted to be a seamstress. Okay. You know, in my kind of growing up, yeah, you make decisions yourself. I'm not from a family that my mom knows that, okay, newscaster is not good for you. You have to be a lawyer. No, no, no. Newscaster is okay for my mother. She doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> but, you know, I grew up from that kind of background. It never helped because uh, I 
feel now that if I had the support, the guide as in choosing a career, because I was so determined to make it in life, you know, and those things are things that mothers don't do it. They were not doing it before. I'm not from that family. Maybe that's why I'm talking like that. Mm. You know, you make the decisions yourself. So Your did, you mother, get, did, you, did you get the opportunity to become a, a seamstress? Yes, I wanted to, but yet I couldn't find myself in any shop or any place to learn. So from Rather, there, my auntie else? was in trading. Okay. She was trading. And so we had to join her. Okay, so she had a store. She was at the market. She okay. was selling second-hand clothes in okay. Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire, okay. Yes, in Abidjan. Okay, in so you, you traveled with yeah. her to Abidjan? Actually, after uh, every vacation, myself, my elder brother, my elder sister will go and leave my other young um, sister and brother down here because they were too young to go by. We, we, ha we go and help her sell, you know. So we started in, from Aboso, just after Elibo, and she realized we need to go further. We later realized we're in Abidjan. So, okay, so you're in Abidjan. Um, how did you manage to mix with the society? You know, it's a French-speaking country. Yeah, you know? when you go as a child, I think the learning is very easy. Mm. I wasn't a child. I was after secondary mm. school, so you should know that. And, I knew what was good and what was bad. You managed to learn how to speak French? I speak good French. Wow. Je parle très bien de français. Oh, ouais. I see. And I, I know see. too much about Cote d'Ivoire. I know... I know Ivory Coast like Ghana. Wow. Mm. Wow. I drive from here. After trading with my mother, I go into a business that we sell um, secondhand engines from um, secondhand stuff, like the things they sell yeah. in Aboso kind. Yeah. In Kumasi. I was trading in that. I, I was selling in Cote d'Ivoire from Ghana. I got into that job. Wow. And I had money. And... I was going every three months. I was virtually living there. So business became good, and now very you, good. Okay, very good. Also. So if if business was good, why then did you decide to do the whole acting thing? And okay, know? the reason why I stopped going to Cote d'Ivoire was I was there one day and I I heard noise early morning around four a.m. and that was the coup from Robert Gay who did the coup some yeah. years ago. So we had, to, it was like a war. It was turning into a war zone now and then everyone had to leave. And the next evening, I saw myself in a bus and I never go, went back to Cote d'Ivoire again. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did you come back with? You okay. left everything, your possessions? For me, I had a place I rented mm. over there that because before when we go, we stay in a hotel. And I realized the hotel is taking too much of my money. But if we can rent a place, I was doing with some guys, we can rent a flat. And when we come, we know that we are living here. We all have keys and we are even safe. Because living in, in your own place and all that, you can lock yourself. Go. So eventually we rented a place and we're living there. A place in Yopugon. Yopugon, yes. Yopugon. Yes. Yeah. Is a, if a French one person is listening, you know. I, I, I know that place because I we had yeah. a help back then when we were growing up. He's lived in Cote d'Ivoire before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could go on Cartier Millionaire. Oh, I see. We were living there. So it There's was another place was called lucky. Bobo de la So or Bobo something. De la so. Bobo, okay. Bobo Jura, Jura so. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, because we're right here. So I was, I was lucky because I had finished selling my stuff. Basically, and what we do is we go there with Kia, these ones that carry pure water now. I see. The, and then the we truck. buy the, the truck, the Kia truck. That was what I was doing. I had money then. Now I'm not rich crap. I'm broke. I see. Yeah. How, so, how, how tough was it at the border? You know, there's, all, there's these stories about the border. And it was you know. tough. But everything is documented. I see. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about a regular day, you know, at the border, at the Elubo border, trying okay, to most of get the time, into. Because I used to go there with my mom through Elubo. Okay. With this business I was doing, I wasn't using Elubo. Okay. I was using um, Domahin Crow. I see. Through Bedu Crow. Okay. And then you hit into Anibri Crow. I see. Anibri Crow is Cote d'Ivoire, but Bedu Crow is Ghana. That's the border. I see. Then from there, you should know that in Cote d'Ivoire, in Ghana, where it was easy, but in Cote d'Ivoire. Police will find ways to take your money, cut the seju, cut the whatever, cut passport, well, everything. 
you keep on then the document, the things, but I make sure the duty is done and everything because you're going to be stopped 20 times on the road. Prrr, they treat human beings before, I don't know now, like footballers. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was a footballer. Wow. They will control you through the the whistle. The whistle. I see. Yeah, it was tough, but hey, I I learned driving when I was like 15. Who taught you how to drive? It was an uncle first. Okay. Before there's this guy who liked me when I was young. When Tell I me about cars. it. Yeah, me people liked me when I was like young, young, young. Okay, but so because of my grandmother, your first relationship was when you were oh, how old? My first relationship, oh, you want me to say this? I think I was like 19 or so. 19? Mm. I see. No, I think I was like 19. Mm, because even that, it how wasn't it like happen? a relationship. Because okay. of my mother, it's not a relationship. Knowing that somebody likes you, pa bypass, bring you something. When you have the chance, you come and stand up behind your wall, you run, that kind of thing. My mom was like a tigress. When did you get the chance to get into a really full relationship where you it could experience each other? It was when I moved out of my mother's other. house. I see. Because I moved out, I think, after I started working with her. I see. And she realized that I can really handle myself. So I didn't really move out. I had a place, but there's no way she would let me go. So I only used my work. So, man, me, quite a you may be abandoned. Then I will go to my place, chill out, and then come back. Chill out. Okay, um, we'll talk about the details of the chilling in a bit. <laughs> All right, so as always, we're just having fun here on Autograph, and uh, we'll be doing some more after these. All right, so um, this is the very crucial part of the show where, you know, we, we don't have all of the time, but we need to squeeze everything in there. Before we, you know, went on the little recess, if I may call it, we were talking about relationships, and um, Nana, Nana Mato spoke about her first relationship. Now, let's talk about relationships. What you're doing now and how everybody's always prying into your life and wanting to know. Um, I remember very well that way back you, you were in a relationship with Ochami, uh, Kwame, and all of that. It, it, it had a time, it's time, it passed, you, move on from, you moved on from it. But tell me about your, your perception and your stance on celebrity relationships. That the, the man is a celebrity, the lady is a celebrity. What do you um, make of it? Okay, being a celebrity doesn't automatically find you a good man. Okay. Or a good woman. You can be a celebrity. You, you may not find a good man. Mm. You but may what about that where both of you are celebrities and you're in a relationship? Oh, you know, my thoughts about celebrities being together, it's me and the Chairman Kwame were young. We were so young in the industry. We were not even as stars as now. And uh, I think what broke the relationship was maturity from both sides. I see. We're just not... We didn't know what the relationship commitment is really about. I see. You know, so I'll just put that one aside. Mm. And there was also, you know, everybody talks about you, everybody talks about all the people in the limelight. People at some point made all sorts of allegations, rumors, and all of that. At a point, they said you were dating the then president and I, all of that. You I heard wish, that as well? I wish. You, you heard that? I heard it. I was sleeping in Kumasi. One Monday morning or so, and jo Radio Gold, some something I'm at a few called me. I said, ah, I've not been in, in a crowd for about a month, and this thing you're telling me is just this weekend. So, what I, was the rumor? What, what did you hear? He said I was traveling with the president, and then the wife came to say, What am I doing in the plane? Oh, come on, even if I would take, travel with the president, I'll take the lead. Every woman knows that I'll take the lead meet the president over there and whatever happens happens but i won't be that stupid to go on board see politicians and then young actress what are you doing here automatically draws that and i will you met the that. president twice or once or so in in not like meeting him one-on-one -on -one. it was at a program mm, president kufour mm. right 
He was at a program, you no. Know, I don't know. What, what did you say to him when you met him? I didn't even have the chance to. We were together around the table, mm. uh, to eating. I see. And he was like, hey, you, oh, no, no, I want to say, oh. And you know, he's always happy when he sees young people from Kumasi sure, making sure. it. So it was the same words of encouragement or the bemo. That's all. Yeah, yeah. And the next minute, oh, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> because dating the president, come on, it's not, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I feel. You know what, so it's, woman. it's a fantasy for you to date a president? Listen to me, every woman will say yes. You're yeah, sure about that? Uh, yes, I am sure about that. I see. Not. <laughs> Nobody will say no. The, whoever says no is a liar. I see. <laughs> <laughs> not, not like, you know, so it helps. Gives what helps? Going out with a man who has a good reputation, mm. he has a wife. Mm. When you're young and you're dating and married, mm. you don't think about those things. You know, mm. when you're young, most but you, girls. But you know, you know oh, by the now books, it's I don't wrong. want to ever date a married man. Okay. Never. But you've dated a married man before? Before, yes. Mm. Yes. But, grow, but growing up, I realized at this thing I'm doing, somebody will do it to me. Let me stop now so that the person don't hurt me more. Okay. Huh? okay. So that's why I stopped mm. dating married women. Men cry and they lie sometimes, they lie a lot. I see. So I just felt like I better go out first. Okay, so so you don't mind marrying uh, a president who's married? You don't? Oh, I wasn't. Because it was if, a fantasy. If I had a chance to date him, definitely I won't marry him. It is natural. People will want to marry him, but. Or to date, just to date him. Date him. But what I'm saying is that, okay, so you are saying that uh, I'm not when ready to you were young, wife, though, so. because you were young, you didn't care about it being wrong and all of that. Yeah, but it wasn't, we, we didn't have, it never happened. Okay. But when you're young, you know, you will not care about these things. You mm. probably f think it's an opportunity for you, date a president, hey, you buy your house, you buy your car, you opportunities. You know, everybody, every young girl will accept it. I see. Yes. And the offers that will come, come on, come on now. Tell me about, you know, let's do a bit of a fast forward. You, you speak about, you know, Maxwell with a lot of, you know, passion. Maxwell, you know, he based you and, but you still do that now that you're strong, don't you? you know, sometimes, sometimes. sometimes. You, you base together? Mm, sometimes. Mm. What was the last time you did that? About three days ago. So. Ah, it must have ended very well. Uh, yes. Uh, who did the bathing, you or him? Both. Mm, I see. <laughs> yeah, sometimes see. it's part How long have you two been together? Um, two and a half years now. Mm. What is it about him that just makes you I, click? You know, when you're growing up, I, I thought of having children with a white man. For me, they're near buffoon and they will pet black. You know, but you have all these fantasies when you're young. But growing up, going into relationship then and then, I realized that, okay, what I'm looking for in a man, no, I think I have a long list. I should cut it, take the most important ones out of my requirements list <laughs> and then face fact. Because I wasn't finding all the qualities that I was looking at. What's about Maxwell that I like so much that makes me love him? Is because he's hard working. It is because he's very loyal. And it is because he respects and loves me for who I am. I see. Not for what I am. Mm. Not for the Nanama McBrown. I see. But for the person that makes Nanama McBrown. Yeah. What makes Nanama McBrown? Mm. So you, you two want to formalize it or you're fine together? We're praying. You live so together? You, you live together? Um, not like we live together, but we're always together. I see. Not like we live together. I can spend more than two weeks in his house mm. and then come back to my house. Mm. I can be there. He can be in my house. I see. Yeah, no restrictions. People do a lot of perceptions. People judge by the roles you play on television and sometimes... People have this, you know, cliche goes around that actresses are promiscuous. They, you know, yeah. What what is it? I mean, they also say that to become a big actress, you need to spread your legs a couple of times. You need to sleep with a few producers, and mm. and you know. Yes, you know what? It we, happens in the industry. It, it, it does. From what I hear, it does. I've never seen one before. 
but I will use myself as an example all the time because I can only speak for myself. When I started acting in Kumasi, um, there were not much producers in Kumasi. It was only Miracle Films in Kumasi. And me from Kwame Osionsa, he introduced me to Miracle Films, not directly, but gave me the direction to go there. And um, I was expecting Kwame to even tell me that. But since he never mentioned that, I wasn't expecting anybody anywhere, because he's the star. Come on, you bow for him. Kwame was a man at that time. And looking at Kwame, who can know? Because the way you want to do But he never started, he never mentioned that. Getting into Miracle Films, he never mentioned that to me. You know, I, was, I went there and then I started being the costume person. But from what I'm hearing lately, because we have plenty guild, plenty, whatever, every day audition is going on. I see myself on posters all the time, audition, audition, audition. I say, hey, who is this? <laughs> They'll tell you, if you want to become Nanama McBrown, if you want yeah. to become like Jaco, Lewin, do this, this. Now, what I see that the young people are doing now is, because they form um, Guild, Guild, Guild. And this is because Ghana Actors Guild is not strong. strong. I'm coming from a seminar Ghana Actors Guild, and I mentioned this over there. You know, if it's strong, every young person, every one who wants to act will directly walk to your office, register, and then get to know the producers and go to them directly or deal with them there. But this is whereby somebody in Kofuidia has a guild. Audition, audition, audition. Audition the people there, taking their money, looking out for beautiful girls, conning them, and then let me have, yeah, when you are the director's girlfriend, you have the major role. Who says so? There have been girls who's been director's girlfriends. We still can't see them. You know, so acting is about you being disciplined. I bet you, if you open up for any director, thousands of girls are coming, they are more prettier than you are. Into after that satisfaction or or the in general. Because the same method, no, the audition, 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 I'll buy no dinner. Audition, audition, audition. You don't pay anything to mention audition, audition. You do it again and then you come and So, so what's happening now is that people are actually paying to audition? People are paying to audition. Somehow I don't really see anything wrong with that. If the audition has good intentions. Sure. For that, I don't see anything like a registration fee Registr because it takes a lot to organize sure. auditions and all. So I sure. don't see anything wrong if you're buying a form of yes. ten cities. But people are CDs. paying to act, but to pay or to sleep with a director or producer mm. before you can be in front of the camera is wrong. Mm. It is very wrong. Mm. It you, kills Nanama, you. Nanama, you have a scar, a very big one there. Um, that's a surgery. You had a surgery? Yes, mm. I had an accident. I remember two years ago. Yeah. Mm. And um, I heard about God, that. Sorry about that. It, it, it must have been a tough time. It was. It was. But in all, no, I want to say thank you. This yeah. scar doesn't, it, didn't, it's, it doesn't harm me. Mm. Although it's painful, but I don't You still see, feel pain sometimes? Oh, yes. I have metal in here. I see. Look at it. It's coming up. See? Oh. Look at the difference between it. Wow. wow. I have metal. I, I wow. almost lost But at least you're able to move your hand oh, properly. Oh, sure, sure. I eat food with it. With it and everything. Yeah. I see. You stayed in the hospital for how long? For almost three weeks. Wow. Before I came to the house. Mm. Mm. And how long did it take you to recover from all of that, it to get back to me, it? It took me about four months. Four months. Mm. Mm. It took me about four months. Mm. I'm still recovering because if I get to forget my when I sleep on my hand like that. Wow. The next morning I have to take a painkiller. Do you get do you get flashbacks? Remember the very I'm, bad incident? I tried so hard not to remember that. I I had an accident in Range Rover Sport and I'm driving two thousand and fourteen Range Rover now. So I don't regret losing that. That's a very and expensive car. Thank you, my yeah. God's grace. So Maxwell yeah. bought it. Got Maxwell bought it. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> Maxwell has, has got cash. He's got. He's oh, not really. Well, he's just well he's hard working. A hard working. Sometimes guy. when people misunderstand you, when yeah. or misquote or maybe the way you are, they only say, "Oh, he no, he's just a hard worker. He deserves to 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 have the yeah. best of little sure. luxuries in sure. life." Sure. Sure. So 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 sometimes you. Um, 
have you driven by that place since several you Several times, several times. Even yesterday, even today, I drive there. Most of the time, when I'm driving about, when, around the Tell place. me about the first time you drove by there after the accident. After the accident, I drove by there from my house and I was looking, I was watching the pillar like, yo, I would have been dead two months ago, right here. The Ghanaians, I wasn't going to tag me here as Nana McBride supporter. You know, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of things come in mind yeah, when I yeah, passed by. But yeah. I had to talk to myself and tell myself, no, forget about that. There's still a life. You know, sometimes I look at there, especially when there's traffic, when, when I'm like going home late. With this job, you can't avoid to go home late. Yeah. So you can't. And I was coming from a shoot, shoot yeah. and I had the accident. Yeah. You know, you only have to pray that God takes you mm. and brings you back. Talk about memories uh, as we round up this discussion. How would you like to be remembered by Ghanaians and your fans? I would like to be remembered as Nanama McBrown. I have an impact that is very positive. And my name is so special that there's no Nanama Magma in the world. In this whole world, there's no Nanama Magma. There can't be Nat, 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 Nathaniel. Nathaniel Lato Nathaniel. is, uh, no, yeah, I've got a couple. Yeah, <laughs> but there is no Nanama Magma ever. Maybe about to have a Nanama um, Maybe someone might admire you so much that they would name you. You know, yeah, I would like to be remembered child. as the real person, mm. the natural girl, the local girl, the Kumawood queen, the Ghanaian screen goddess. I've been, I think, I, it's, I'm, I'm, I have a positive soul, mm. so I definitely know that. And the number mm -hmm. 11 jerseys footballer. Oh, you know, I didn't have the chance to play for, for the national black Please. queens. Probably I would have been the Samu, the Samuajan at that time, you know. <laughs> Who knows? Because I had that flair, my mates were calling me darling girl I see. because of Daniel Lado, darling see. boy. So you were the yeah. darling girl. You know, I had that forehead too. So. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. It's been great sharing your company today. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's Nanama McBrown's <laughs> story. Uh, so many things that you'd want to remember from uh, today's show. And uh, you've heard the accolades. Uh, you, you know, I just love the bit about her jersey numbers, number seven and number 11, the darling girl. So when you see her anytime, just give her a shout. So that was Nanama McBrown, multiple award-winning screen actress here in Ghana who does um, some social work supporting young ladies as well to make them uh, realize their dreams. Thank you all very much for watching. We say thank you to Alisa Hotel Northridge, uh, the Pegasus, this very fine ambiance here. I say thank you as well to Gorgeous by Royal Dennis. And uh, you can find the uh, shop in um, Nyaniba Estates in Osu, A-C-C-R-A. All right, so I will be back on your screen on Saturday next week with another very, very interesting discussion. Peace. That is a plus. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching.